she walked in and it was like Elsa, Cinderella, and Tinkerbell all in one walked in the room and even Jacqueline Quick goes, whoa. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Calm down, everyone. We need to calm down with the NFL season kicking off tonight. Our schedules are a bit out of control, so a last-minute audible, but we're still here. No new episode this week, but what's old is back or new again. I don't know the saying. Either way, this is a throwback Thursday edition of Calm Down. In fact, we recorded it the week Mac was born. Cute. But we never released it things got busy for Aaron. I give the full story about Steve setting me up to fail with uh, the old outfit choice at his friend's wedding. Aaron talks about her dad meeting Terry Bradshaw, which was so sweet. So much to get to, and we'll have a new pregame and new episode next week telling you all about our week one shenanigans. Enjoy, everyone. Happy football. Hey, girl. Hey. What's new in your world? Well, usually on this show, we talk headlines. Obviously, some exciting news came out, but we're going to get to that after the break, meaning Mm -hmm. next week when we were ready to talk about it and discuss Mm -hmm. it more. But we have other headlines. Wait, first of all. Can't wait. What's the dress thing? We already saw the IG. You're doing a little tease. I mean, first of all, welcome to the Calm Down Podcast. Welcome to the Calm Down Podcast. needs to calm down. She needs to stop touching that same area over and over again. Well, there's two more that have come to the party since we saw each other at our Fox seminar. Why? We'll get to your dress in just a moment. More headlines. I did Mm -hmm. the derma flash. I love the derma flash, but something must have happened because it unleashed the hounds. Okay. Wow. So Aaron and I, we go to the Fox seminar. We love it. it always <laughs> happens every off season. Um, all yep. of the different broadcasting groups from Fox get together and the different pregame shows. The NFL comes in, rules, new rules, new communication issues, just sort of like league and the things, but also time for us to all hang out. We love it. A good time's had by all. Aaron and I are in the bathroom discussing shaving our face. And oh, um, yeah, I you was telling to tell her, me. How I went to, you guys, I have the most unhealthy relationship with my nail technician. You heard me, technician, Lynn. So I love her like a second mother. She is so wonderful, but I am getting really too, I'm getting too comfortable with Lynn because every time I go in there, it's not only do I get my nails done, I get my toes done. She's now dyeing my eyebrows, which as we know, sometimes are way too freaking dark. I go, Lynn, what, what? Sharpie are we using on these eyebrows? Tone Rangers it down a little bit. Like I don't okay. need them to be black. Then sh- the last time I was in there, she was like, I will do your eyebrows because I don't, you were the one that told me we're not doing eyelash extensions anymore. You no. look ridiculous. As I was you doing that don't. for a while. No, stop. You didn't say that. I was like, oh, really? They don't look good. But it was a little mariposa, like butterflies flying off of the end. So I'm not doing that anymore. But I want to not have to put mascara on and wake up in the morning and be cute, cute, cute. So Lynn goes, well, I can do that. I can dye your eyelashes. Do I ask questions? I just go, okay. Halfway through the application, my eyes are burning, stinging. I'm like, Lynn, and now I'm not allowed to open them. You're going to need those for work. Stop I'm messing around with them in the nail salon that it's burning. She's getting the hot towels that are supposed to be used to remove the rock salt on your feet. They're now on my face. I, so I'm like this back my hand and my neck hurts. So that's hard for me to do. But do I stop there? No, because as she's tipping my head back to relieve me of the pain that's happening on my eyelashes, she goes, your face hairy. Excuse me, my face is hairy. I said, I know because I haven't shaved it lately. So I was like, Lynn, can you shave my face? And she goes, yeah, I can. Mm. She goes in the back and she gets a razor, not a Bic razor that I've talked about before that I will shave my face with. She gets a full on razor blade. And I, do I stop her? Nope. Give me an example of what you're talking about. Like, what are we talking about? Like a box cutter? What are we talking about? Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So like a full on, good, good. (laughs) We're playing that. What's the, what's a game show? It's been something. Anyways. Oh no, it's guy. Yes. No. It's father of the bride. They're trying to cut the guest list. So she's now, uh, my eyes are so red. My eyebrows are black and she's shaving my face with a straight up like edge razor. Like I'm at a barber shop. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. One stop shopping at Lynn's. I was like, is there anything else you can do? Oh, and there is. I go, I need my haircut. This was the time before. She goes, no problem. Trimmed it on up. So how are your eyelashes? Uh, I don't have as many, but uh, they're dark. They fell out? 
<laughs> well, a few of them fell out, but they're dark. I mean, now I have mascara on, but yeah. So again, when did this I'm way too stop? trusting. D- not, not long. I mean, it was probably like an hour after the fact. Point is, is I have an unhealthy relationship with Lynn. I'm too trusting of her. If she was like offering like vasectomies in the back, I'd be like, oh, great. Sure. Steve, just go there. Like I would be like referring her like anything. Yeah. So anywho, I don't know if anyone else has their, that kind of a relationship with their nail person, but I love Lynn. Oh, I've um, got an unhealthy one with, with my pores right now. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. were going there, our seminar. What else did we say? Did, were we saying something else about our seminar? No, I just said, stop picking your face. Oh, yeah. Hey, any, now that we're still talking about the seminar, any fun things that happened during it that you love that you want to talk about? I was trying to Other think than what my did obsession we... of Greg Olson. I, know. I can't, I can't handle him. He's honestly. the best. I know. So, Greg Olson, who, of course, works with Erin throughout the year on her crew. Um, shout out to him winning Newcomer of the Year in the booth with his, his Emmy. Oh, yeah. Um, he's just the best. Anyways, but he's like the life of the party. I just love anyone is. that is so like, funny, inclusive, too. And, like, he just makes everyone happy. And yeah, no, he's great. Like, even his um, question and answers. So it's our boss. Like, the president of Fox Sports, Eric Shanks, and Greg Olson is like making jokes like with him and, and at his expense. And he can get away with anything he wants. It probably won't make sense for anyone listening to this podcast, but we get it. We love him. He's hysterical. Um, um, yeah. Another thing about this seminar was that you saw my mother there. My mom and dad were at the bar. So cute. Paula. I mean, mm-hmm. also, I, I, my parents are great. I, I love them. But my favorite thing about them is they are ordering drinks at the bar that I feel like the bartenders never heard of. I know my dad said this to you. He goes, I go, dad, what are you going to get? He goes, I'm going to get a Tia Maria. Yeah. And he said to you, you ever heard of that? No, dad, no one has. Not even the man behind the bar. No, I said the Santa Maria. I've heard of that. I don't have not heard of the Tia. I've never heard of that. And he, and then the bartender said, this he goes well we have Kahlua and your dad was like the look of disgust on your dad's face like that's not even comparable so yeah so he proceeded to tell me about this Tia Maria but I got I gotta try it so Paula um you went with your dad to go say hi to some other people yeah Paula he had never met was- Terry which he was so excited mm-hmm. about and John so Smoltz, sweet. who you know pitched for a second with the Red Sox and proceeded to tell my dad I got lit up when I was with the Red Sox it was like the worst ERA of my career blah 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 my dad's like we were honored to have you in our uniform. Dad, are you the GM? Oh, no, what's happening? That's so sweet. Yeah, Theo, um, yeah, it was really cool. It was it was awesome to see my dad. So you stayed back with my mom, who knows mm-hmm. all about trivia and uh, like current events. Paula, Paula started regaling us with these tales of headlines, and I've never felt stupider because she's like, "Have you guys <laughs> heard about this? Have you guys heard about this?" And Steve and I are like, "No, we haven't heard about any of this stuff." So I got a great education in the 40 minutes or 45 minutes that you were gone. Her storytelling is fantastic. And I was like, wait, does that, I don't even want to talk about the story that's happening, but it's, it's a sad situation in Texas is what's currently going on with that headline. But she is a gem. I, I feel like I'd want to be on Paula's team if we were playing Trivial Pursuit. Yes, or something. you would. We were sitting around the dinner table last week laughing and talking and just about like the most random stories that led us to a conversation where we were talking about the Jacksons and how she, um, the Jack- Janet like Jackson had, five. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Janet had her rib removed. Rumor has it allegedly for the throb video or the throb album cover. And then how really? she was pregnant during rhythm nation, but no one acknowledged it. And that's why she was wearing, again, this is all allegedly my mom yells out from the back of the room. Yeah. Wasn't that DeBarge's baby? Who are no. you? And then no. we had to like Spotify DeBarge and it was like one of my favorite, the rhythm of the night. Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh. Of course. Yeah. El DeBarge. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But I mean, yeah. it was great. Yeah. I love a random playlist too. That's another thing I'm going to ask our mm-hmm. wonderful listeners too. Because I get stuck listening to the same thing and Steve is a great DJ. He's this is, so, so good. So my wonderful boyfriend, Steve, he's the guy that you want with the ox cord. Yep. Uh, the ox cord because the pressure is too much. Yeah. You and I felt like this when we were in Vegas because if you don't know the next song that's yeah. in the queue, now you're scrambling. Now you're like, oh my God. And then you like, you got to change up the music. Yes. You got to get a little variety. You got to read the room. Like, so even... Oh, we'll bring it back to the wedding that we were um, at this past weekend. A lot of weddings. Ooh. See, this is what happens when oh, you yeah. date a younger guy. 
younger guy. They're all getting married. My friends, uh, like me, are on our second marriages. So he's he's first rounders at this point. So Sweet Pan and Ashley got married this weekend in Telluride. Well, you know what Cuties. it reminded me of? You know, your Montana backdrop. Like everything looked oh. fake. It was so beautiful. So congratulations to them. Um, but yeah, yeah, congrats, guys. Couple issues here. So um, Steve, this is, good. It, this is his best friend who got married. So yeah. If it's the if it's your boyfriend's friends that are getting married, like I'm not in charge of the hotels or the booking of the flights or the itinerary. I'm just going to show up as your guest, right? Like these are your these are your friends and your friends are incredible and now they like all become our friends, that's fine. But I it's still your, you know, your side of the the aisle, if you will. Like you're planning this, right? Like I'm coming as your guest. Sure. So I never asked to look at the invite. I never asked to get the details of exactly what I'm doing. So when I say to Steve, what's the attire for the like wedding? Because it's in Telluride, like in this like formal, is it not formal? And he said, it's black tie optional. Like the pan, the groom wanted them to wear tuxes. So the guys were more formal, but like the girls were casual. Mm -hmm. I walked down in a dress. I got a cocktail a dress cocktail for dinner tonight. One. It was a cocktail dress. It was a floral, which I thought was adorable if it wasn't what it ended up being, black tie. A uh, floral, cute Zimmerman dress that I was like, okay, and I'll throw on like these like kind of pseudo cowboy boots. I'll wear a hat like the night before, like the welcome party, people were wearing hats and it was like a Western theme. So I was like, oh yeah, this is obviously what's going to happen tomorrow too. Sure. No. I am the asshole that shows up and all the other girls are in black tie floor length formal gowns. And I look like I'm the entertainment. I look like I'm performing at the wedding. I've got the hat. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Ashley and Pan. (laughs) Exactly. I'm not kidding. I look like I was about to do the halftime entertainment. So and he and Steve's like, I go, so we walk downstairs and I'm looking and now I see like Jessica and this like gorgeous like she's going to the oscars like right. everyone's like it's so formal and i looked at steve and i was like uh what's ha- did you not want to tell me that it's black tie and he goes it said black tie optional oh well i didn't have the option okay you took it away from me because now i just look like a dickhead so in all the pictures i honestly look like i work in the the local little like brewery pub and i came over for a picture with the ladies so ladies and gentlemen here's a, a psa for you If it's your boyfriend or your girlfriend's friend that's getting married, ask to see the invite or ask your other friends that you know are going to the wedding what their outfit is ahead of time so you can, you know, bounce some ideas off of them so you don't look like the clown that showed up to the wedding. I said to Kelly, I go, should I take off my hat? And she goes, yeah. I was like, well, I I, I didn't do my hair. So now, and now at the, they're saying the prayer. We're at dinner. We're saying the prayer. I'm taking my hat off. I have to take the hat off. Amen. Out of respect. Peace be with you. Peace be with me. Peace be with Steve, because you're in trouble. Fuck. You're in trouble. Um, what are you for Halloween? I'm in trouble. Um, uh, I, exactly. Okay, couple things. You looked adorable, but I would understand. Then did you go into full Aaron and Carissa mode where you had to tell everyone the story so they wouldn't think you were a moron? Everyone. And we, you walked, yeah, every single person uh, that I, attended that wedding. I saw Ashley. I didn't didn't say congratulations after the nuptials. I looked at sorry. her in the bathroom and I go, I am so sorry. I look like such a dick. I walked up to Troy's girlfriend, never had met her. And I go, I'm sorry. I said, I'm the asshole. And I got robbed last week. And she was probably like, who's this girl. Is and she I've been divorced drugs? twice. It's like, oh, and I've been divorced twice. And they're like, oh my God, she's probably like, literally like, and what's your social security number? Like, calm five, five, five. the F down. No, I know I did. I did exactly that. I had to go around and do, well, look what I'm doing right now. Cause I feel so bad. I was like, well, it's oh what my I God. do with my face. I tell everybody, uh, we know we can see you looked adorable, but I get it. So yes, ladies, PSA out there. Place. If you're, if you're going with a guy, regardless is if it's your boyfriend, your husband, they need to show you the actual invite. You need to have a glance around at it to know uh, yeah. what the attire is, what the activity mm-hmm. list is. Cause you have to pack for that. There was horseback like riding. I didn't see you on the horse. Oh, I should have been on the horse. Well, I was busy uh, putting the hat and the dress on. I didn't have time to get on the uh, on the back of the horse. But no, that's the thing. Like I, it was already a question we talked about on the podcast. Like, what am I wearing to this thing? Well, then when I went back to cooperate with Steve, and he's like, oh, "No, no, no," and I was like, "This outfit's fine, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, it looks great. I love that outfit." So I'm walking down thinking I'm cute, 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 only to realize I look like I just went to the gift shop and bought everything in Telluride and put it on 
for this Western wedding. God. Anyways, but congratulations to the happy couple. <laughs> it's not about uh, me. It's about them. It's never, it's never about me. Oh my God. Um, Anywho, I thought you looked so, adorable. Yeah. And I was so starved for details of how it was going and everything. So you guys were yeah. so cute. Wedding season is over, though. I don't have any more it weddings. Is? And we were talking about it as a group. Um, do you have any other friends? Aside from me, who's not getting married again. I was the only one in the group. Steve and I, I would be the only wedding left. Think so. I don't feel like that. That's my cup of tea. All my friends are moving. Are you leaving? Apparently, we decided at the bar, yeah, which I forgot about the Florida. next day, we're going to Florida. Oh. <laughs> in fact, um, Steve's sweet, <laughs> uh, I guess, had told uh, Steve's dad, she goes, Great news. Carissa and Steve are moving to Florida. And so Steve goes, Why are we moving to Florida? And I was like, Yeah, remember the conversation we had with Aaron? So, no, we're not moving to Florida, but we were talking about different places we could live yeah. together. I really want to get a big compound. Kelly and I were also talking about this. Apparently, this podcast is just for like our five friends that are listening. Sure. Um, I, and perhaps I'll open it up to the whole group. Do you ever have a desire to like just, I want to buy like, huge like plot of land and then everyone can have their own little place but like then we just golf cart back and forth to each other because even in kelly's neighborhood for like fourth of july we got in a golf cart we drove in the golf cart to their one friend's house like you party there the other friends meet and it's like so fun yeah like in life like you just want to be with the people that you love and like Mm -hmm. close proximity i don't want to have to get in the car i want to be able to horseback to your house golf cart or walk well, horseback would be awkward, but uh, golf cart or walk, <laughs> you could do that out here. But I'm sick of paying what we're paying out here, and we're ready to move. Oh, we can't. My husband just signed a new contract. Anywho, yay! Um, Congrats, go Jared. team, go. Let's mm-hmm. see what else is happening. Do we want to talk a little bit about these headlines? Oh yeah, I would love to. Um, okay, so you want to um, talk about Britney Spears? I don't well, get the- it. I don't get it. And I tried to zoom in on the video. And actually, while we were at the bar at the seminar, this was playing and I was talking to people because I was curious why Britney Spears was on SportsCenter, all that. Um, Yeah, I just uh, poor thing. I just don't know what's happening. uh, Yeah. yeah. So I I guess so she everyone says that she hit the security guy and or the security like hit her or something like that. I don't know. Can someone explain? Did this actually happen? And can that video like exonerate her from any wrongdoing. I don't know. I can't even see it. I'm trying to like zoom in and I can't see it. So okay. well, I, while we I, figure that out, yeah, um, somebody we'll send it to us to the next one. Um, air this, we talk this a lot on this podcast about airlines and airports because we spend a lot crazy. of our lives in them. This headline airline passenger finds plane floor soaked in blood. So the long and short of this story is apparently the flight before someone had had a hemorrhage. They were bleeding everywhere. It wasn't cleaned up appropriately. So then this couple gets on the flight the next day and this guy had taken his shoes off, which we've talked about on this podcast. And he notices like something's like on the floor and it's wet. The flight attendant brings him over some, you know, paper towels, whatever to clean it up, realizes it's blood. And now his socks are soaked in blood and has to sit there the rest of the flight with a bloody floor over. And then this is what really, this is what really gets me. The smell of rotten blood is like manure. I had taken my shoes off at the start of the flight and there were blood on my socks. Actually, it was manure, kind of. Three days later, he was called by Air France and told that the blood had been mixed with feces. If you give me a $15 What's voucher on over and an here? appetizer at TGI Fridays for this, I am going to lose my mind. What? My status for Air France or whatever airline this was better be like yours, like 360. I I don't know. It that is just beyond. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing: a 180 and getting be- off that flight immediately because there is no way I'm sitting in that seat. I will stand the remainder of the flight by the bathrooms as opposed to sit with my feet in blood. Blood grosses me out to begin with. And Other I, people's blood, yeah. But that's Gross. just not safe. Here's the thing. I, I want to, full full disclosure, we are not blaming the flight attendants for this because those people no, no, are no. on and off the plane. It is not their the job to clean crew. the plate. Exactly. Yeah. I, oh my God. I will tell you, I don't know no. what proper, what's the proper standard, what's the proper way, but I have been on a flight. I told you about this, that this guy had a very, yeah. very frightening incident and he ended up having a seizure. He threw up. He did it multiple times on our flight. I was actually shocked we didn't make an emergency landing. Um, and 
there was a lot of vomit in the um, aisle and they just threw coffee grounds on it and, and yeah, that's left so it. weird. Yeah, it was different. I um I was confused by the whole thing. And I've seen a lot on airlines. And um, I was so concerned for this man because I thought, what if this had been me or one of my coworkers or my parents or something like this? But yeah, yeah I was really confused. And then when we all just couldn't wait to get off of it, it was like you basically step over it, pick up your yeah, luggage. That's weird. To go. Yeah, it was and different. Again, it was different. I don't, I don't like the, it's not the flight attendant's job, but no. like, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I'm such a weirdo. I'd probably be like, get, let me clean it. Let me, let me just clean this up and let me just fix this for everyone because no one needs to be dealing with that. The blood and feces on a plane though. That's no, questionable. That, I mean, what is in. happening? What happened? What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Eight people were stuck upside down on a U.S. roller this. coaster for more than three hours. What no, do you no, do about the no, blood no. to your head? I mean, speaking of blood. But yeah, it, more blood. That is... I'd be crapping my pants if I was upside down for more than three hours. I'll tell you that. When's the last time you you... went on a roller coaster? So that was going to be my next question. Do you like roller coasters? I used to love them. Used to love love them. But I have heard too many of these stories. And like, and there was one the other day, actually, that was, uh, Paula didn't tell me this headline. I'm surprised she didn't. Mom? But the roller coaster had got like a split in the, one of the support beams. No. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 you know what's so crazy though? This is where I, I don't understand myself sometimes. And I wish, like, I wish I had a better understanding of it. I will jump out of a plane. Like I, I went skydiving. I've got no problem with that. I've been bungee jumping. Like I'm not afraid of heights, but yet I'm like mm, roller coasters. No. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the the psychology of that is, but this is uh -uh. upside down for three hours. What are you doing? Insane. Insane. Um, Yeah. And I I feel like because I've been at Disney enough where you can, well, but this is different. You're upside down and... I've seen so much at Disney where I've actually been, the, the lights have come on on rides. That's happened to you before? I've been to Disney enough where the lights have come on on the ride. You've been asked to unbuckle your seatbelt, get up really? and go off. Yeah. So I was oh, kind I've of confused why I there wasn't like an emergency kind of um, guidelines or whatever that they would have to do to get out of it. But if they're upside down, it's very dangerous. This just oh. sounds terrible. No, yeah, I've, I've walked out of like Space Mountain before. Lights have come down or lights have come on. We've walked down the stairs. Crazy. I've seen everything uh, there. I have. How many times do you think you've been to Disneyland? Thousands. And I love it. Oh I miss God. it. And I want to go back. Uh, um, I'll tell you where we're not going back to any concerts. If this behavior keeps people up. People are losing people their minds. Things. So these last couple of ones, Harry Styles hit uh, with an object in his eye. Kelsey Ballerini had something happen. Losing her mind. Rita, uh, was it not Rita or uh, uh, BB Rexa? She had it like really bad. Someone threw a cell phone at her. I just love Adele. Adele Adele's like no nonsense, no bullshit. Aside from her un, you know, a, unmatched talent, she also just personality wise is someone that I can get behind always. Yep. Adele threatens fans who throw stuff on stage with a t-shirt gun. I fucking dare you. The English singer is currently doing her residency in Las Vegas and having time of her life, but she also uh, has a bit of fun every now and then during last Saturday's concert um, saying that, like she'll kill you if you throw anything on stage. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Kelly and I were talking about this. Whether it's entertainers or athletes or anything, yep. anyone that's putting, do you want to put plexiglass up? And like then the entertainer You're ruining has it to, for you're everyone. You're ruining it for any everyone. And why are you throwing, here's my thing. You're throwing it for what? The five seconds of attention that you get, like a streaker, for example, like at a game. Yep. So then what you get thrown in jail, but here, and I'm not getting political, but is it, can we, can we make the rules a little bit stricter that if you throw something, then you're going to jail for 25 years that you, a lot of people wouldn't throw stuff then. No, I just don't understand where we're doing this like ridiculous behavior and actually like harming people. Exactly. I wouldn't want to be, if, if I'm a, if I'm an entertainer, I'd be like, mm -mm. I think about that too. Like we're Taylor Swift, like because she's been, you know, I've seen so much footage of her concert lately, just with her being on tour. Like, even if some psychopaths, like too close to her on stage or like grabs her foot, like I would be free. I, I give them so much credit. I really do. I just, I do. I'm not as, I'm not as brave to like stand out there and basically be like, Hey, I'm a massive target with these. You psychopaths. are, you're out on a field. I think about it all the time. You Honestly. Are. Yes. You're out on a field. All it would take was some fan chucking something at you like i mean 
Have you ever Honestly, had a need to have something? I mean, I don't want to jinx it because I'm sure it's going to happen. No, but I've no, been but... smacked in the face by a friggin' line drive at a Mets game while I was reporting. That was a time. Um, I can't no, that but it's just you. behave, behave. Yeah. You want to mm-hmm. go back to like games with yeah. no fans in the stands and no, no concerts? Mm-hmm. Like just behave. I just don't. Ever since we've been locked down, people are losing their minds on planes. They're bleeding everywhere. They're like, you know, they're throwing shit at Harry Styles. Leave them alone. Leave them like, alone. Stop. I know. Just behave. I don't understand. Well, and throw, then some, what, throw something at yourself. I'm sick of here's these Here's what happens with that stuff, too. And there's all these copycat people, yeah. right? Like, so one person does it and it's like, oh, I'll do, I'll do the next one. It's like, stop, 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 stop. Stop. Yeah, I'm bored of all of it. Have you seen um, Elton John in concert? I haven't. I'm so jealous. Oh, no, you have, right? no, it's over. I know. I haven't. Se- I never got to see him. Yeah, I saw him. him and he actually Houston. came to the University of Florida, which was pretty cool. What? And I went. W- yeah, when I was in school, he actually came and did a concert there, and that was pretty awesome. And then I saw him another time too. But yeah, phenomenal. Just I I read somewhere how old he was, but I don't see it in this article. I was, I was actually that he was shocked. Still performing. Me too. Yeah. Um. But there's the one, there's those iconic pictures of him at uh, Dodger Stadium. Yeah. And just, I would, I would have loved like um, living or dead. What concert? Who would you want to see? 76 years old from Rye, Elton John. Living yeah. or dead. Whitney Houston. I would have loved to have seen her. Um, Michael Jackson would be my, Whitney number one, Michael Jackson number two. I would have liked to see the Beatles. Yeah. Hope Madonna's doing okay because that was one yeah, that I was like, I thought this, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to her lately. Um, oh, I, uh, she was, was she at Michael Rubin's party? Probably. You could have talked to her then. Um, but yeah, I, I would have, I thought that that concert would have been amazing to go to all her hits. I would have lost my skull if I had gone to that. Hopefully she's all right. I think that thing's been postponed. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, but I'm she's... losing my mind over you saying losing my skull. I've never heard I would that lose expression. My skull. Lose my skull. I gotta Absolutely. start writing down the Aaron isms. Yeah, losing yeah. my skull. Celine, oh, that was so. Oh. I wanted to go to her again. God, I hope she's doing okay. I know. Uh, she's. I know. I worry. I should have worried about her for a while. Her. She was incredible, though. I saw her in Vegas. That's where you saw, her, right? Same. The residency she had there. God. I always got worried when she'd hit her sternum and say, Renee, yeah. she's so frail. I said, oh, yeah. not so hard. One of my favorite moments from working at Extra was I was backstage at a, whatever it was. It was like a, I don't want to say, I, I don't want to say it's I Heart. It was some musical like confluence of people and Cher was performing out on stage. And oh uh, my God, Celine had just come off of stage and she was back to, uh, stage to do interviews. And she stops me and she she was like, let's go watch. And I have a video. I got to find it. I have a video of us walking over and watching Cher perform on the monitor because Celine with wanted to Celine? watch her. With Celine? With Celine. And then not only, not only are we watching Cher, my heart will always go on for you, Celine. And if I could turn back time, I'd relive this entire moment all over again. She then gets all the group, like the whole like group of reporters. So it's like Access Hollywood. Like I remember that like, Kelsey was there, like all these people for us to start singing together. There's a sing along to the Cher song led by Celine Dion. What was mm-hmm. the song? Oh, I don't remember. It was just, I mean, I have to look at the video. Well, no, I mean, because she was singing so many. It was like a, it was like a compilation, but we were, it was just a sing along. Yeah. Led oh. by Celine. Uh-huh. I got to it. meet Celine when I went. We, I guess it was like, I don't know, my bachelorette or I don't know. We went with a couple of girls and we, Constance, um, my manager, had set it up where we went and we met her backstage. And funny story, my girlfriend, Jackie, who I always talk about, she's great. I mean, she, but, yeah. you know, kind of making fun of me as we're walking in like this, yo, we're going to Celine Dion for a bachelorette <laughs> party. I'm like, you know what? Like, we're in Vegas. Like, knock it off. Yeah. Like, this is going to be a time. Jackie's a time wherever, wherever she goes but you know we go backstage no phones put your phones down um okay we're in this room just our group and everything is like everybody's in their ifb and their mics and okay how much time five minutes five minutes ladies before she comes and when she comes she will approach you and do not you know we will take the photo meet her 
I found out on our way there. I oh, okay, didn't know sorry, okay. before, but I, I found out as we were walking in because we were. I was like, "Where are we going?" And they're like, "We're going to meet her." And I was like, "Oh my god!" So it, it yeah. was very like oh five three minutes three minutes and like you know Jackie like she just wants her like vodka soda. She's just like, yeah. "Oh my god!" Like my husband's want a con Smythe. I'm good here. Like you know, like w- we fine. I'm a two time yeah Stanley Cup wife. And then all of a sudden they go, "Okay," and yep, ninety seconds. And it was like, I mean, what what's happening? Count down she walked in and it was like elsa cinderella and tinkerbell all in one Ah. walked in the room and even jacqueline quick goes whoa like Ah, it was like all of us like like goosebumps hard thing like it was just like Mm -hmm. losing our mind and then she walked in and she goes well are you guys gonna say hello or are you just gonna stand there and keep staring at me and it was like hello and she walked in and she like grabbed our hands and like took a picture of us and they were like she's getting married and she goes you're getting married and I was like I am my husband's Canadian and she goes where is he from and I was like eh Saskatchewan nothing against Saskatchewan but like she's from Montreal like I you know Mm -hmm. I was like oh I want to say like Montreal nothing against Saskatchewan Saski you know I love you and she grabs my hand and she goes you are marrying a boy from Saskatchewan like sang me a whole song about it and I was like she goes you guys want to take a picture and she had a huge cough drop in her mouth and I was just like you are a goddess oh my god I drove I drove all night was that what you're gonna sing yeah, I was just going to sing. I would drive all night to get to her. That she was my is. only bummer about the concert. She didn't sing that. They they played it mm. in the intro where they did the montage or the montage. How yeah. many shows she's done? How many people she's performed for? And it was like they were singing that. But the one thing mm. I will say, Jackie said this: when you go to her show, you don't realize how many bangers she has. Or nope. like, and like I remember the one where it goes seems to believe in and like all of a sudden the song goes and jackie's like oh my god my like god. you forget it's great mm-hmm. love her so many Get well, well that's Celine. a problem i love you i know i love her too renee she loved it renee. when she said her love for renee it's i saw so a video sweet. of her on tiktok being wheeled down an aisle for her son's no. um wedding and i don't know if it's true and i just really hope she's okay because she is a superstar slash princess slash musical royalty yeah she's incredible um and with that we are all (laughs) out of time um but tune in next week for all things celine maybe my my face will clear up by then my god uh you'll be great sweetheart you'll be great great. love you all enjoy the all-star game sweet comments and concern oh thanks i'm going to get on a plane right now to take my sweet mother kathy thompson to an all-star game because she loves the mariners so much and it's uh in uh it's at safeco it's not even called safeco anymore the different name changes but anyway what's it called love you i don't know city now yeah. city with t-mobile i think it's t-mobile now anyways if you're one of the title sponsors of the stadium let us know <laughs> love ya oh yes t-mobile thanks Brian. i love Brian. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.